Hi, I'm Roger and welcome back to my channel. Unfortunately, I didn't get to film an intro before I went autocrossing because I was busy getting my car ready for the event. Kind of neglected this car because the car looked really good until about three years ago and the clear coat on the car just started getting really bad and the car looks horrible now. So I really don't take any time keeping the car clean anymore like I should. So the night before the event, I have a foam cannon, so I just sprayed it off and washed it with a mitt. It's kind of disgusting to me the results that I got doing it because it actually turned out pretty decent and I could spend several hours detailing the exterior of the car and it really wouldn't look any better because the paint's just gotten bad on the car. But thinking about maybe next year about getting this car painted, but then on the other hand, I've been kind of kicking the idea around of getting rid of the car, but the car's not really worth anything, especially with the paint looking bad. So it doesn't make sense to me to get rid of it but then it doesn't make sense to keep it at the same time. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this car really. This will be my first time ever autocrossing or racing this car. I know one thing that's gonna hurt me a little bit is the tires are starting to get bad. They're probably maybe getting like five years old, six years old. But when I first put the tires on the car, I could just nail it in low gear and it would hook up. I have to be careful now in low gear and it'll spin really bad and sometimes it even spin in a second, so the tires are starting to get dry and pretty so after hard. after getting the car loaded up and tools loaded up, Friday night I was looking at the website of a club that was hosting the event and realized that I should have registered for the event and that they had, they said they had a limited number of spots, so I wasn't even sure if I was gonna be able to go after doing all that. So I tried reserving a spot and I never got a confirmation email because it was like 12 o'clock almost on well, I actually been Saturday morning at that point in time. So I never got an email the next morning, which I really didn't expect to because I knew the people had to get to the event herself. So I went there and luckily I was able to register. I, I think they just have that on the website as a formality. I think they'd pretty much let anybody run though. And had the driver's meeting and the, they told us if we were new to the event to wait that there was going to be more of a driver's meeting so there were several people there that had never autocrossed before and they told us how everything worked and the guy walked us around the course the course was really really confusing and everybody said it was confusing not even if you're new they said it was confusing and the guy that laid the course off even missed a cone himself so they said if you're new to ride with somebody and they also had a couple cars there that they said that would be competitive on the national level. The one was a Toyota MR2 and then the other was a Mazda Miata. And they said if the seats were empty in those cars, just ask if you could ride because they do, they were letting people ride in those cars all day long. And so I grabbed my helmet and lined up ready to go. And I don't know, I asked a guy like five or six cars back. He looked like he'd been there before because he didn't have tape for numbers. He had like permanent numbers on his car. It was a Mazda Miata. And he was a little bit reluctant at first to let me ride because he didn't want the extra weight in his car. And I told him, well, that's okay. I'll just find somebody else. Because I understand that, you know, he didn't want the weight. And he said, well, don't worry about it. Just get in because he still had three runs in the afternoon. Because you can get three morning, because you get three morning runs and three afternoon runs or you can get four morning runs if you don't do your afternoon runs, which is what I did because I had somewhere else to go in the afternoon. We actually went and watched drag racing afterwards. But uh, this guy let me ride in the Miata and I was really, really shocked at that car. I mean, that thing, it was awesome the way that car performed. And the thing just looked like a stock Miata pretty much. I mean, maybe sat a little bit lower than what a stock Miata would, but it didn't even have racing seats in it. And like when he'd go around the right-hand turn, I thought I was going to end up over in the driver's seat. That car was cornering so hard. And then when he'd go around the left-hand turn, it was throwing me against the door panel. I mean, it was, it was crazy fast. Come to find out when he got done, he'd laid down the fastest time in the morning by like two seconds or something. And that was even with me in it. So I don't know what he did on his afternoon runs, if he got any better or not. And then I also got to ride in the Toyota MR2. And that thing was really, really fast too. But like say the little Miata I rode in was actually faster that day. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Man, that sounds good. Thanks. Anyway, I'm gonna ask you if you're ready in a second and then after that I'll send you, okay? But I'll tell you both times, right? All right. 
So you almost ready? Yeah. Go catch her. Everybody at the event seemed really, really nice. I had an instructor ride with me since I was new and the course was complicated and he helped navigate me around there. First run, I missed a cone, so I didn't get a time. Second run, I did better. Then third run, my GoPro, the SD card on it got full. So I didn't get my third or fourth runs on the video. My third run was my best run. The fourth run, of course, my SD card was full, so I didn't catch that on camera. And I almost missed a cone and I had to swerve really hard to go around the cone. I don't know how good my times were in comparison to everybody else. I know I was way, way off of what the Miata and MR2 that I rode in, their times, their times were insane. But my car has Eibach, Sportline Springs. The control arms I bought used, they're supposed to be Hotchkiss. I'm not sure if they really are. I have Maximum Motorsports caster camber plates and I aligned the car to the specs that Maximum Motorsports said, not like the race specs, but like the improved specs for street use. And I think that's all the suspension mods I have. And the car, like performance engine wise, it's full bolt-ons and 373 gears. That's another thing that was hurt me, the 373 gears, because with this T5 transmission, it's geared really low in low gear. And it was geared like too low to go around most of the course in low gear but then I was too high for second gear. I think I'd have been better off with the factory 308s back in the rear end because I pretty much could have gone around the whole course in low gear. When I went across the finish line, I was hitting about 55 mile an hour. So really, I need the 308s back in it to be competitive or either maybe step up to like 410s or 430s so second gear would be lower and I, I'd be geared lower for second gear. Do really well. My main goal was just to have a good time and I had a really good time. They're having another event in a couple weeks. I'm planning on going to that. The instructor said that the main thing was holding me back was knowing the course. Next time I'm gonna to try to walk the course better 
and I'm gonna to try to get in group B when my group gets called. I forget what they call it, but I was in like grid three, I think it was. And then they divide you into two groups, group A and group B. So while group A is running, group B works the course. Next time I'm gonna to try to get in group B so that way I can stand out there and watch the cars go around the course to try to help memorize the course better. And I'll probably try to get an instructor to ride with me again just to be sure I don't I miss it all day that on my fifth or sixth run I could have done well because my fourth run I felt like I was really starting to get used to the course and I was able to push the car a little bit harder. And like I say, you can't tell on the camera because there's so much wind noise, but I did have the tires squealing at times. Next time I go, my goals are to not miss any cones and just to improve my times and have fun again. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this.